What's up, everybody? And today we are reacting to Korea Admiral. Is it Yi? Yai? I'm sorry if I'm butchering that. Keep beating the drum. Extra history one. This is by Extra Credits. I will leave a link down below. I've never reacted to this channel, so I'm excited to react to it and see what it's all about. I have no idea what this Ad Admiral Yi, Admiral Yai. I'm going to find out. I'm going to find out. And I'm very excited to find out because I know nothing about Korea and I'd love to know more. Um, but before we get started, Original Adventures, me and my wife are converting a US school bus and traveling in the United States. If you are interested in seeing that, both the YouTube channel and the vlog, I will leave a link down below to both of them. Go and check them out. Also leave a link down below to the original video. Obviously, go over there, like it, subscribe and all that good stuff. Okay, guys? But for now, let's shut up. Let's pop this up and let's see what this is all about. War drums. Dan, Dan. What war is this? I wonder which one it is. Okay. Okay. The year is 1572, 26 years earlier. A 28-year-old man rides across an open plain. A group of military men stand quietly, observing. His horse stumbles. He's thrown. At first, everybody watching thinks he's dead. His leg is horribly bent, broken. But after a moment, Ouch. he gets up, dragging one leg behind him, and pulls himself to a willow tree. He binds his leg with its branches, remounts his horse, and finishes the military examination. All right. The guy's obviously quite the, uh, quite the strong, strong fellow. Um... I love this art style. I really like this art style, by the way. So, credit to Extra History. He fails the exam anyway, but four <laughs> years later, he'll be back. He'll pass, and so will begin the career of one of the most glorious admirals of all time. Okay. It's strange that this man even decided to join the military. Korea had known 200 years of relative peace, threatened only by the occasional raids from the Jurchen tribes on the northern border and pirate crews plying the nearby sea. The military was not a highly respected career choice for a man of noble birth. Taking the civil service exams and joining the ranks of the Confucian court was a much better way to achieve power and success. Okay, so this guy didn't need to join the military at all, but he wanted to anyway. And he obviously was determined to do it because he broke his leg and got back on the horse. So, and, and failed and came back again four years later. So... And yet this man, Yi Sun Shin, though he was schooled in the Confucian texts, had dreamed of being a soldier since he was a little boy. So it's pronounced Yi Sun Shin. Okay. A cool name. A cool name. And so at last, when he had passed the military exam, he was appointed to a desolate fort along the northern border. Okay. While most of the border forts were pits of corruption, seen simply as a place to dump individuals who had fallen out of favor with the court, Yi drilled his men rigorously and refortified his post, bringing it up to true readiness in case of an attack. Okay. One day, the provincial governor came by to inspect the post. This was a man all of the fort commanders dreaded, known for his harsh punishments and brutal discipline. But when he came to Yi, he simply said, hmm, well done, and moved on. Shortly... <laughs> so this guy was obviously really proud of his work, really determined, and uh, seems to have potentially been a good leader. We don't know whether he was just absolutely hammering his lads, but potentially a good leader. Thereafter, Yi was moved back to Seoul, a sign of growing favor, and he was given a post at the military academy there, training okay. new recruits. That's he cool. was by all accounts rigorous, diligent, and incorruptible. And this was exactly the problem. At this time, the military academy was actually a tool for younger noble sons to jump up the ranks quickly, and for courtiers to channel their favorite people into the cushiest assignments. Okay. And Yi was not cooperating. So, after a short stay in Seoul, he was booted back to a provincial assignment. Wow, so he was so uncorrupt and by the book that he was kicked out. That's unfortunate, I guess, but it's kind of, we know that now, so that's kind of a good thing that we know that now. By July, though, he had secured a position running a naval garrison and was rapidly rising up the ranks again. But yep. here, too, he was schemed against by corrupt officials. Many attempts were made to have Yi removed, but each one he parried expertly until, one day, one of his previous superiors from the military academy, one who Yi had rebuked for corruption, was called to his province to do an inspection. Seeing an opportunity for revenge, mm. the inspector wrote a report castigating Yi, saying he was completely negligent. When the report got to Seoul, Yi found himself dismissed from the military entirely. Holy, oh. that's, that's horrible. That's absolutely terrible. Four months later, though, he was vindicated. 
found innocent of the charges against him, he was returned to service, but demoted to the lowest possible officer grade. He might have languished at this menial post, but at last his diligence was finally rewarded when he was brought back to meaningful duty by none other than one of his former rivals. One of the fleet commanders who Yi had served under while maintaining the naval garrison had been transferred to the northern frontier, and knowing that he'd need good, capable officers, he requested Yi be sent with him. Soon, though, it became clear that Yi was needed to garrison a fort on the Tumen River, which was one of the demarcation lines between Jurchen and Korean territory. I feel like he kind of breezed over that story of strangeness there. He wanted to get in, he broke his leg, he failed, he came back four years later, he got in. And then he was a good soldier, kicked out because of it, rejoined, then put into a good position. Like, that story alone's pretty remarkable, isn't it? Let's be honest. Georgian raiders roamed far south of the Korean border, looting and pillaging at will. Raids yep. had nearly overrun the nearby frontier province. And so, Yi took up the post. He drilled his troops until they were in top shape, and knowing that simply shoring up the defenses wouldn't be enough, he laid his troops out for an ambush, and then lured the raiders into Korean territory. He fell on them with a ferocity and a swiftness they had never seen in Korea. Okay. Within hours, the tribes were smashed, and their power shattered. They would never again be such a threat to the province. So he was obviously so good that he protected Korea from any other invasions from them. That's pretty amazing. But here, too, Yi was stymied by a jealous superior. And while the court was jubilant about his success, the official record reads, Although the court recognized Yi Sun-shin's meritorious service to the king, it nevertheless decided against awarding him a prize. Shortly after that this, sucks. Yi's father died, and being deeply rooted in Confucian ideals, Yi retired home for three years in accordance with the traditional mourning period. When he at Three years to mourn? Holy cow! That's amazing. Where do we get that now? I feel like we never get- we never allow time off for anything these days. Like, at all. At last returned to service, he was put in charge of transportation for the court, but a mere 16 days later, it was decided that Yi was needed too badly at the border, and once again, he was sent north. Okay. He was to man a small island fortress. Undermanned, crumbling, beyond disrepair, he once again drilled its garrison, shored up its defenses, and week after week sent out a request to the district commander for reinforcements. Okay. Then, one morning, as the mists rolled in and most of the men were out harvesting rice because the military was in such a state that men on the border had to harvest their own food, wow. the Jurchen attacked, pouring out of the mist on horseback. Yi Sun-shin only had a dozen men to defend with. He and his handful of soldiers fought desperately, cutting their way to one group of captives and escaping with 50 people the Jurchen would have taken prisoner. But by this time, you know the story. In order to avoid blame, Yi's superior, a man named Yi Il, blamed the entire defeat on Yi Sun Shin. He had him brought what? back to the capital, tortured, and put on trial in an attempt to have him condemned so that Yi Il could avoid any of the blame. Why is there so many assholes? Against this guy. But Yi Sun Shin did not crack under torture, and when it came time to take the stand, he said this to Yi Il. My lord, you are asking me to assume the whole responsibility for the misfortune, but you are wrong. May I remind you that you have always refused my frequent request for reinforcement. The defeat was not a result of my negligence of duty, but in large part, your fault. Therefore, it is not I, but you, who should be held responsible for the defeat. Ooh. The court was stunned. Many of them knew of Yi's record and were inclined to believe him, so in the end, he was allowed to live, but he was stripped of his rank again, again and returned to the army as a common enlisted man, starting over at the very bottom, as if he'd never taken the military examinations. What? He was once again placed on the northern border and asked to fight the invading tribes, and once again, he did so with distinction, until finally in 1588, he asked that he be allowed to retire. But storm clouds were gathering over Korea, and some, especially his longtime friend, a man named Ryu Sung Young, recognized that soon the country would have need of good military men. This sounds like the most bizarre story I've ever heard. Pretty remarkable, but bizarre. While Yi had struggled through his career in the military, Ryu, his childhood compatriot, who had been his companion in games of war, had risen to be prime minister of Korea. It was actually wow. through Ryu's influence, and because of his subtle aid, that Yi had time and again survived the machinations held against him. Now, Ryu planned to see that Yi would take his rightful place for the war he feared was coming. Okay. On the next episode of Extra History, what? remember how in the Sengoku Jidai episodes we talked about that messy Japanese invasion of Korea? Well, that's about to happen. 
Join us as Yi and Ryu take on the Japanese forces, as we delve into the differences in government, technology, okay. and arms between these two nations, and as we explore the first few disastrous weeks of this war. That's pretty amazing, and also great editing. Great editing. I'm intrigued. I want to know more. It seems like there's a lot. If you guys like this and it gets enough likes, I will watch the rest of them. If not, I'll just watch them in my own time because they are interesting. Um, but yeah, remarkable story for a guy that's constantly being knocked down and then brought back up, up again out of his own determination. Amazing. Um, I definitely want to react to more. But let me know in the comments what you think. You, what, do you want me to react to more of it? Do you, if you, do you want to see more videos like this um, about the Korean military and more historical videos? Because I really like that. Uh, but for now, members, you're amazing. I love you. I couldn't do this without you. I honestly couldn't make videos every single day if it wasn't for these members right here. So thank you for supporting the channel as much as you do. I truly appreciate it. Um, links down below to all my socials, including the link to Discord, uh, my podcast, my Twitch stream where I stream every Tuesdays and Thursday, uh, and my second channel where I play D&D &D and a bunch of other fun stuff. Also, there'll be a link down below for this video. Please go over there, give it a like. Oh, and Original Adventures. Me and my wife are converting to US school bus and traveling in the United States. If you're interested in that, go and check it out. Original Adventures, both YouTube and Instagram. Link down below. Other than that, take it easy. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.